Sometimes here at 60 Minutes, we're lucky enough to come across a seemingly ordinary New Zealander who's chucked it all in to do something different, something daring, something extraordinary. Stu Robertson is one of those people. Two years ago, he was a high-flying, big-earning business owner, but then he and wife Semily packed up life as they knew it to travel the world, taking photos in the name of peace. Along the way, they've captured the attention of everyone from Hollywood celebrities to notorious criminals, even the Dalai Lama. It's an ambitious art project and still a work in progress. When Stu was back in New Zealand recently, we checked in on his collection so far and met the man behind the camera. We feel that the world has never needed peace like it needs it now. So as an art project, we really wanted to invigorate and contribute to the aesthetic of peace with the image of a white rose. It's a simple premise, but a mammoth undertaking, one with a global reach. One man and his camera, out to photograph 10,000 people, each holding the ancient symbol of peace, a single white rose. Back home down under, it's hard to imagine a more picture-perfect location than Queenstown. After more than 18 months on the road, the journey for Stu and Semily Robertson has come full circle, bringing them back to the very place where Peace in 10,000 Hands was conceived. We decided that we wanted to do an art project that had a cause, that was global. Being a Kiwi, we decided, you know, Kiwis wanting to go global, so that's what we did. Today's subject is Louisa Choppy Patterson, a Queenstown helicopter pilot, a local icon. She's brought us to one of her favourite places, a frozen lake tucked deep in the mountains. That's nice. Yeah, that's beautiful. Do not move. That is awesome. If a picture paints a thousand words, today there's only one word that awesome. matters. I'd like to say, welcome to Peace in 10,000 Hands. Thank you so much. Thank you for, Thank you for bringing us so up here. So you turned to your family and your friends and said, I'm going to put a toothbrush and a camera in my backpack and go around the world taking photos of people holding a rose. They must have thought you were crazy. Mm. Well, there, I, I guess there's two schools of thought. There's the school of thought of the people who know me well, who would say typical, you know, with a bit of an eye roll and a wink. And then there's the school thought of the people who don't know me that well that think it's um, an impossible dream basically, who have watched it happen. They sold their house to finance the project in part. Crowdfunding is also helping make it happen. Stu has taken 2,000 images so far, 8,000 to go. And the results, well, judge for yourself. It's not an art project about saving the world. It's not an art project that is, its aim is to bring peace to the planet. Well, this is a project that is creating a conversation for peace with the people that we interact with through the artwork that we create, through the films that we do. Stu's wife of 15 years, Semily, is happily along for the ride. This is their first day off since the journey began. We feel quite often like we're doing something people we're going somewhere that people haven't been before or that people, you know, you don't hear of people kind of giving up everything and going off on some sort of <laughs> crusade. Lightened While Stu here. does most of the travelling and photography, Semily holds the fort yeah, back home, so. processing the thousands of images he sends back. So it keeps the whole thing going. And probably keeps you going as well? Yes, she keeps me going. Tries Semily to keep you on the straight and narrow? Keeps me on the straight and narrow, tries to keep me on the straight and narrow. She is the brain's trust of the organisation. Yeah, absolutely. 18 months into it, the couple find it hard to fathom how far they've come with what started as a small art project in their home office. What kind of traction is this project getting globally now? It's sort of twofold. One, I think that people are responding to the project and to the images, um, and that has been compounded by who we are including and how we're doing it. And I think, secondly, it is 
it seems to be the right time. There's a universal consciousness, a focus on peace. There's more talk of peace now than there's ever been. Stu's rose holders aren't chosen at random. He wants the project to be a snapshot of humanity right now. So how does the conversation start? I basically say, hi, my name's Stu and I'm from New Zealand, which is always fantastic, the New, <laughs> the New Zealand ace in the hole. And then I say I'm photographing a single white rose, an ancient symbol of peace, in the hands of 10,000 people from every country on the planet. And I'd be honoured if you'd be one of them. And percentage-wise, how many yeses, how many noes? So I've gotten pretty good at analysing who I think will be a yes and, and who will be a no. Every now and then I will be in a situation where I really try and push it and try and get a no. So that means I approach people that I think will say no, which are normally quite Just to test yourself. Just to test myself and, and to test the boundaries of, of what we're doing in the project and that sort of thing. And they're, they're generally situations that are more precarious than, than not. Um, but that's what keeps uh, the project on the fringe, on the edge, constantly pushing. Memorably, Stu spent time in South Central LA with its most notorious and dangerous criminals. And as he crisscrossed the world, he uncovered some truly remarkable moments. As I was taking the photograph, I was kneeling in the road and the blanket fell off her baby's head. And this was her newborn baby that she was living on the street with. It's been a journey of extremes, from the third world to Hollywood, in search of celebrities willing to show their support, lend a hand. This image of Dower Hannah looks slightly familiar. Was this her idea or yours? Uh, it, was a, it was a collaboration. We were uh, in front of her parents' place on Malibu and the water was freezing cold and she didn't come in a swimsuit but she whipped her jeans off and um, hopped in the water and I followed her in with the camera and we got the shot. Yeah, and I love that photograph. It was, um, that was a day that meant a lot to the project. Mm. Um, and from one beautiful woman to another, there seems to be a theme emerging here, Stu. There does. Is it the Kiwi charm that it, you rely on? It might be the Kiwi charm. And uh, interestingly, we usually always get invited to people's homes, so we spend a bit of time at Demi Moore's place. <laughs> that would be amazing, wouldn't it, if I spoke it wrong? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be great. Picture of what? He even compared jokes with funny man Ricky Gervais. And he was yeah. a nice man? Incredibly nice, very generous, um, did everything and more. We took multiple photos of him. The photo shoot lasted for quite a, a while. If you said to me 18 months ago, put a list together, you know, I wouldn't have started with the Governor General, Willie Apiata, Hollywood celebrities, um, and all the people that we have managed to photograph around the world. But the momentum has started to speed up, which has already added to the proof of concept, which is why we started. But the reality of this project is far from the glitz of the A-listers. It's been gruelling at times, relentless. No, there's not a lot of glamour. You know, there's um, travelling coach, using buses, sharing bathrooms, the odd park bench. It's, uh, it's really about getting to the places to get the shot. It's not so much about the comfort of the journey, which to me um, just makes the journey grittier. Still to come, Stu pulls off the seemingly impossible, securing time with the Dalai Lama, and he unveils the stunning result. I knew that um, it would be a fraction of a moment of time if it happened to actually get the photograph.
week in Queenstown, we join Stu on the streets for a glimpse into how he works and who or what makes for a great shot. The mix needs to be right and we need to be getting people that will look interesting enough to be turned into a piece of art um, to make a book, make a piece of art on the wall. Yeah. So if I was walking down here now, do you think you'd be stopping me? Is your next question, does my bum look big in these pants? <laughs> of course I'd pick you. Right, let's let the waiting begin. Yeah. Let the selection process begin. Let the selection process begin. Let me know if you see anyone stuck. Nah. Finally, something that he likes the look of. Okay, so face me again like this. Yeah, and lift up a bit. Yeah. That's perfect right there, bro. That's awesome. Earlier this year, in a break from documenting peace in 10,000 hands, the couple had a fundraising exhibition at home, the first time Stu's images had ever been seen by the public. It was the first time we'd really shown the world our hand in terms of these artworks that we were creating and to have had such an amazing response um, was really a, a, probably an enormously um, moving moment for me because you know you're really bearing it all and you put yourself out there to be judged and people responded really um, really genuinely and uh, there was a lot of emotion um, that was expressed. Stu and Semily were also given the honour of producing the film for this year's Illuminate exhibition. Their images projected grand scale onto the side of the Auckland Museum in celebration of World Peace Day. Peace to me means uh, to be able to live freely and not have to worry about anything. In terms of an endorsement, it was incredible to have a curated museum show to project onto one of the biggest and most beautiful, you know, cinema screens in New Zealand was incredible. And now that we've got that in the can, we feel very proud. But there's no question, Stu's proudest moment so far, enlisting the support of the Dalai Lama and getting him in front of the camera. We were um, told where to wait and we waited and um what's it going through your mind at this point when you're waiting for the dalai lama focusing the camera <laughs> that was all that was on my mind were you doing a few practice runs i was practicing i never practice anything i always just go and do it but i was practicing and i knew that um it would be a fraction of a moment of time if it happened to actually get the photograph so uh, the moment came when he was walking out and the gentleman that has been on security detail with him for 26 years stared the Dalai Lama in our direction and spoke to him and I handed the rose to the Dalai Lama and he blessed the rose and he blessed me. Then he posed for his photograph and then he left. Looking at that image now, what does that mean to you and how important is that image, not only to you personally but to the, to the project? The Dalai Lama really stands for a lot of people as the ultimate in a peacekeeper, understanding, tolerance, love. I think that when I look at the image, I am emotional that we got the image, obviously. For him to choose to hold this object and be photographed with it was incredible and a huge endorsement for us. While celebrity support has certainly helped the project gain momentum, Stu says peace will always firmly have its heart in New Zealand. This is a, a global project that's been taken to the world by a couple of Kiwis and been predominantly supported and funded by Kiwis. And that's the way we want to keep it. This is a project going to the world from New Zealand. And you can't get much more Kiwiana than this. Mike Mee's family has been farming land underneath the Remarkables for more than 50 years. He's not too fond of having his photo taken, 
But when Stu asked, well, he couldn't say no. If you can look at the rose for me, Mike, and just think peaceful, happy thoughts. Awesome. Welcome to Peace in 10,000 Hands. <laughs> right, very Thank cool. Thank you very much. Oh, it's a pleasure. Next on Stu and Semele's hit list is Archbishop Desmond Tutu. He's already agreed to hold the rose, but Stu's plans to visit Africa are on hold due to the Ebola outbreak. You've never thought this is just all too hard? No. <laughs> I'm too tired. <laughs> no, I have been tired. No, never. Um, there were times when um, the situation that I needed to get into was challenging. There's been times when I have been tired where I haven't quite have enough money but I've never ever thought for a moment about giving it up. How proud are you of what you and Semele have achieved over these last couple of years? That's not a very Kiwi question, is it? To ask a Kiwi how proud they are of what they're doing. I think that, um, I think we are proud of what we're doing, but for me this is, this is still all just part of the journey and um, there's still a lot more work. There's a lot more gritty situations. There's a lot more challenging people and environments that we need to deal with to get to the end of this trip. To do something in, with our life um, that has the potential to leave the world even just a tiny little bit of a better place, I don't really think there's anything better that you can do with your life. It will take Stu and Semele about another five years to complete their journey, but we're in no doubt they'll get there. They hope to eventually make money from the project, with proceeds from sales of the artworks donated to charity. You can follow their progress at www.peacein10,000hands.com. That's all from us tonight, but before we go, here's an email in response to Karen McCarthy's story on the Gay Rugby World Cup. This from the director of the New Zealand School of Dance, Gary Trinder. I just wanted to commend you for airing the story on gay rugby players. It was so heartening to see the positive promotion of gay men rather than presenting us all as drag queens or sexual predators. More of the same, please. We'd love to have your feedback, so please email us, 60minutes at skytv.co.nz. Thank you for joining us. Have a very good night.